Firstly, I, of course, I need to thank the organizers for this um, uh, because it's a pleasure for us, the PhD students, to give a talk here. And also because uh, we can study math in the mountain and so near to the beach. So I, I need to thank you. Okay. And I think that the title may be the longest in this workshop. Uh, there are two, uh, maybe three uh, negative words here. Uh, the first one is non-compact, okay? And the uh, second and the third is uh, non-negative, okay? All I want to uh, talk about is just uh, um, gradient rich solitons, which is not as good as you want. So maybe the title can be changed to a, bit, uh, to a shorter one like this. Uh, the geometry of bad gradient rich story tone. So please don't expect my result is very good because uh, the rich story tone is not so good. Okay. So in this talk, um, I will talk about the positivity of curvatures of gradient rich story tone. Uh, it means that um, uh, we can derive some uh, non, uh, uh, other mathematicians. They already derived some result about the uh, positivity of uh, scalar curvatures, rich curvatures of gradient rich soliton. And uh, the second part of this talk uh, will focus on the non collapsing property. Uh, it means that we want to control the uh, injectivity radius <clears throat> at one point uh, with the curvature bound on its uh, neighborhood. Okay. So let me define the gradient rich solitone. Uh, gradient rich solitone is a Riemannian manifold uh, which satisfies this equation here. Uh, Rij here is a rich tensor. And the second term is a Hessian of uh, uh, some function f, c infinity function on this manifold. And uh, lambda here is a real number. It may be positive or zero or negative. And gij here is a Riemannian metric. So um, we can see from this equation if we uh, discard the, the Hessian term, then it becomes the Einstein equation. So in this sense, we can say that uh, a, rich, um, a gradient rich soliton is a generalization of Einstein manifolds. Okay, or you can say Einstein manifold is a kind of uh, gradient rich soliton. It's a special case. And uh, on the other hand, if we keep the Hessian term and uh, uh, we kill the rich curvature. It means that uh, we discuss the gradient rich solitons with zero rich curvature. Then it must satisfy this equation. And in this case, it must be flat uh, the Euclidean space. So there's nothing to talk about with this equation. And if you find some paper that discuss a uh, uh, Haitian structure, uh, it is not this one. Because this one is nothing to discuss. In my, uh, uh, any manifold satisfies this equation uh, must be the trivial one. OK. So if we have a gradient rich soliton, uh, remember that it is a, a manifold. Then we can run the rich flow on this manifold uh, so that, uh, as I write here, uh, a gradient rich soliton will generate a self-similar solution of the rich flow. Uh, self-similar means that when time goes, then the, the, the remaining metric is only deferred by a diffeomorphism and a scaling factor. It may be strings or just invariant or expand. It depends on the, the, the factor lambda. When lambda is positive, 
and you run the Ritchie flow, it will start, stop uh, at the time equals to 1 over 2 lambda. Okay, it's positive. And you can solve this uh, equation exactly on this time interval from time equals to minus infinity. Uh, for such kind of solution of Ricci flow, we, we call it uh, an ancient solution. So when lambda is positive or lambda is zero, then we can get a self-similar solution, uh, which is ancient, which is an uh, ancient solution. And when lambda is negative, um, we, we, can, we can generate a self-similar solution, which is expand on this time interval. Okay. So let us uh, look at an easy example here. Uh, <laughs> this one means that it's a Sn, okay, not S2 only. So in this case, <clears throat> if we take lambda equals to one in the in the in the definition of gradient rich soliton, then the the solution it generates. Uh, must satisfy this equation. And for each time slice, for example, this one or this one, it will satisfy uh, this equation with different factor here. Okay, so uh, every slice is uh, gradient rich soliton. <clears throat> and it will become singular in this case, uh, the sphere. Uh, at time equals to one over two. <coughs> okay, it's similar to the other case, expanding or uh, expanding one, because for the for the steady one here is always zero. Okay, so you may think uh, if we want want to study the gradient rich soliton, maybe we just look at one slice. Because for the other time, it just uh, differ by a scaling. So uh, a philosophy here is almost all properties of a self-similar solution can be found by study on just a gradient rich soliton. But uh, not not all the all the property you can get in this way. For example, the positivity of gradient rich soliton is um, was derived from the the whole solution uh, under the Ricci flow, not only a time slice. Okay, uh, we recall a uh, so-called Hamilton IV pinching estimate. Uh, this estimate states that if we have a solution of Ricci flow on a time interval zero to capital T, and uh, the curvature is uniformly bounded on this time interval. Uh, and for dimension equals to three, we have this inequality. Uh, it is true for all t in this time interval. So you can see uh, here, uh, the mu, nu, nu is the smallest eigenvalue of the uh, rich operator. So in general, uh, in the beginning, we, we just take new equals to, for example, minus one because the uh, curvature is bounded, so we renormalize it. So that new equals minus one. And as you can see, if capital T is very large, uh, it means that you, are, you, are, you can solve the flow in a very long time. Then here, lo uh, the log one plus T will be very large. But because this part is bounded, so uh, here is very large, then uh, our minus nu must be uh, goes to zero. Okay? So it's called a, called a pinching estimate because you can pinch the eigenvalue of Ricci curvature so that uh, when, when you can solve the the Ricci flow in a very long time, 
then it will become um, rich in non-negative in some sense. Okay. So especially when we have uh, ancient solution, ancient solution. So uh, here capital T can be infinite, uh, infinitely large. So you uh, you can see that an ancient solution satisfies this equation here. Uh, th this conditions here uh, should be rich in non-negative. Okay. And in 2007. Uh, Binong Chen has a generalization. Uh, Binong Chen is not me, okay? I'm Shi Wei Chen. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's a uh, uh, confused you. <laughs> okay, he has a generalization. Uh, in his proof, he don't need the bounded curvature of assumption. And also, uh, he don't need the, the, the dimension to be three. It means that you don't need any condition, okay? Then you can, uh, he can prove uh, a local version of this estimate. And he get the result is, um, for, for all ancient solution, for example, uh, three key solitone or steady solitone, they must be uh, scalar non-negative. Okay, in, in any dimension, and you don't need to assume the curvature is bounded. And in dimension three, the, the same result to, to uh, the original one is rich curvature is non-negative. And similar result holds for expanding solitones because uh, expanding solitones exist at a, a on, on an infinite time interval, so you can get similar positivity on a scalar curvature. <clears throat> so this is what I called an a priori uh, positivity of curvatures. Okay. So up to now, we don't have uh, more more. Uh, we don't have a better result than this. <clears throat> so there are some questions maybe we may ask. For example, we already know that uh, each shrinking soliton is uh, scalar non-negative. So is it possible to prove, for example, it is uh, rich non-negative or, or any, any, anything you can ask? For example, this one, uh, maybe there exists a shrinking soliton with uh, rich curvature decays to zero, right? Maybe. Um, but the, uh, the answer of this question is no. Because someone, uh, but not someone, Ni uh, they Ni, he proved that if you have a, if, if you have a shrinking soliton, Uh, which is uh, rich in non-negative, then there exists a positive low bound on its scalar curvature. Uh, here R is scalar curvature. Okay, so it, uh, it is impossible for a shrinking solitone uh, with non-negative and uh, decayed Decays to zero rich curvature. Okay, so the answer of this question is no. And we may ask, is there any expanding soliton with positive sectional curvatures? Because uh, you can you can see in the uh, equation, uh, expanding soliton is similar. Sorry. Uh, the first one. Uh, this um, yes, the, the uh, for this theorem is is true for for all dimensions. Yes. Oh, my question: um, on which the norm of Ricci curvature decays to zero? Ah, uh, I should um, sorry, I should put this condition there. 
if we assume uh, if we assume the rich curvature is non-negative, of course this theorem applies to this question. And in general, if we don't know the rich curvature is non-negative, then we uh, we don't know that it is true or not. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, second questions. Um, okay, because the uh, expanding soliton is a kind of um, it's similar to um, Einstein metaphor with negative curvature. So maybe you may ask question as this. <coughs> But the answer is, uh, is yes. In fact, we have many expanding soliton examples uh, which are, um, uh, whose sectional curvatures are positive. Okay. In, in dimension two or higher dimension. And uh, maybe we can ask uh, if the the, <coughs> the expanding soliton uh, is it possible for an expanding soliton to have a positively pinched rich curvature? Uh, it means that the rich curvature it has a low bound, as this, where the R is always the scalar curvature, and epsilon is a fixed number, which is positive, and uh, scalar curvature is also positive. Is it possible to find an expanding soliton which satisfies this equation, uh, this inequality? Uh, up to now, we know if we assume that the sectional curvature is non-negative, here, then there does not exist an expanding soliton satisfies this. Okay. But uh, for the question here, uh, if we don't assume any positivity on the sectional curvature or rich curvature or something like this. Only this question, uh, we don't know the answer is, it's still open. Uh, for dimension um, n larger or equal to four, it's open. And for n equals to three, uh, it's already down. We, we can prove there is no uh, complete and compact expanding soliton satisfies this equation. So it's open only for n uh, bigger than three. And uh, I just list some questions here. Now maybe these questions are not really very important. <laughs> okay, the, the last is, uh, is there any expanding soliton uh, with fast decay curvature. Uh, it means that your sectional curvature decays uh, in this rate. R uh, minus two minus epsilon. The R is the distance from some point x uh, in, in, in this soliton. Uh, this question, I think, is still open. We don't know um, results relative to this. Okay. Uh, in fact, it's a motivation of my work. Uh, I want to prove that um, there does not exist, exist uh, any expanding soliton which uh, has Decaying very fast, decaying, uh, decaying curvatures very fast. Okay. So, 
in order to study this question, uh, I think I, I want to do, I, I want to study a tangent cone and infinity of this kind of manifold. Uh, because when curvature decays very fast, then it looks like that. Uh, maybe like this uh, here, uh, because it, the because the curvature decay very fast, so it, it looks like a cone. So if we 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 take a take a rescaling like this, um, M yes, O O G. Lambda k square g and uh, lambda k goes to infinity. So <coughs> we want to discuss the limit, uh, the Gromov Hausdorff limit of this uh, sequence of manifolds. Uh, it's called the tangent cone at infinity. <clears throat> okay, if we know the tangent cone at infinity of this uh, expanding soliton, then maybe we 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 can have some information uh, of this expanding soliton itself. So what I need to do is to estimate the injectivity radius of this soliton uh, so that I can take a limit of this. So I expect <laughs> expect okay, hope the I hope that the injectivity radius will grow at a rate um, proportion to R, where R is distance from O, I hope. So <coughs> we need to study the non-cleft property of uh, gradient rich soliton. So <coughs> the non cleft uh, property is defined as this before. Uh, for a solution of Ricci's Ricci flow, uh, when we said it is non cleft, it means that if you have a, um, have a bound on a parabolic neighborhood of x, uh, of the point xt, then you can have a, a volume control on this ball at time, at, at, at time t, okay? Uh, here, the, the, the bound of Riemannian curvature is on the parabolic neighborhood, but you only have a result on a fixed time t. Uh, if you have these two, uh, I mean the uh, control on the curvature and the uh, low bound on the volume, then you can say that the injectivity of uh, xt uh, must have a low bound. And uh, this kappa prime does not depend on x. Okay, for any, for any xt here, Uh, if the curvature is bounded here, okay, here is R. <coughs> For any xt, then you, you, you know that the injectivity radius of xt, this point, has a uniform low bound, which is not dependent on uh, xt. So, but I, I, I don't use this notion. Uh, oh, here I should say that uh, for all R, sorry. For all R. <coughs> OK. 
but in, in this talk, uh, we, we use another notion. It's called uh, strongly non-collapsed. Uh, it is strong in two sense. The first one, we only have a curvature bound on a, uh, on a ball which is independent of time. In fact, I only have a Riemannian manifold now. I don't, I don't consider a, a Ricci flow. Okay. So the, the second one, uh, which, um, it can be called stronger because here is an alpha. And here is alpha, but there is no alpha here. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a little bit stronger because you can you can rescale this ball and uh, maybe get some uh, uh, better control on the on the on the rescaling sequence. Okay. So in this talk, I just talk about a strongly non collapsed result. Uh, we, do, we need to mention the result from Naber. He proved that uh, for all dimensions, um, all the string king solitones with bounded curvatures uh, are non-collapsed. Non uh, non-collapsed non in the sense of this one. Okay, the first one. But then, uh, we don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe expanding solitone has the same result or not. I don't know that. Okay, <clears throat> to study the, uh, the this property, um, there is a classical method is to study the volume. But because I I, I don't have a um, rich non negative, so sometimes it is not very uh, very very easy to control the volume. Okay, because. When the rich is non negative, you have a Bishop Gromov volume comparison or something like that. But if you, you don't know the, the, the rich curvature is non negative or not, then I try another way, which is uh, does not relate to the volume. So it's called the uh, geodesic chain. Uh, I will give a definition of this. <clears throat> so the idea is to study the the geodesic loop uh, directly. <clears throat> because we know that the injectivity radius is the um, the definition of it is the inf. Uh, how do we say that? Uh, no. uh, in distance x, y, where y is a cut point. And we can see the uh, the alternative of cut point. Uh, it's a lemma that if right down here, it's a lemma that if y is a cut point of x, uh, I should use p q. Okay, uh, if q is a cut point. Of P, then there are two possibilities. One is maybe Q is a conjugate point of P, and the second one is uh, there exist two uh, minimizing geodesic geodesics from P to Q. P is here, and like this. 
These two are minimally geodesic. And there's a property that if Q is the uh, nearest cut point of P, moreover, if Q is the nearest cut point of P, then these two minimum geodesic will uh, has an angle equal to pi here. It means that this loop is smooth at, P, uh, at Q. Okay. So it's the same if you uh, the same argument can show that if P is uh, near this uh, cut point of Q then this corner must be smooth also. Okay, so <clears throat> so we have this re uh, corollary that if Q is not conjugate to P and uh, M has no smooth loop, uh, they, if there exists no smooth loop on a manifold M, then you know, you know that this loop uh, must uh, non smooth at P, but smooth at Q. Okay. So it, it, uh, this loop has only one non smooth point. So from a fixed point P here, and we have a non smooth loop. To Q, and then we look at this point Q and its injectivity radius, and its nearest cut point, maybe here. Okay. Then again, we have a, a, a loop which is uh, which has only one non-smooth point at Q, and uh, maybe we denote it by x zero, x one, x two. X1 and X2. And we can always do that if there does not exist any smooth loop on M. And uh, XI is not a conjugate point to XI minus 1. It's not conjugate. to uh, xi minus 1. OK. <clears throat> then we can go on to have such kind of uh, loops. And uh, I call it a geodesic chain. Okay. Uh, I draw a picture here. OK. <laughs> uh, imagine a, a, a metaphor like this, and uh, maybe asymptotic to a cylinder. Then we start at this point, x0. And here is non-smooth. Okay. And we go to x1. Uh, here is smooth. Here it is smooth. Okay. And we go on and go on. Here is not smooth, but here is smooth. And we can go on uh, except two possible cases. One is uh, we, we, we have a smooth loop uh, here, but uh, if we assume that there is no smooth loop on this manifold, then it never stops. Okay, is it clear? For up, up to now, you know the definition of such kind of geodesic chain. It's okay. And uh, it is called accumulate near a point. If uh, you can imagine the, the metaphor when it is cylinder-like, it's a little bit, not, uh, uh, it, it's like this, but not so obvious. You know, looks like a cylinder, OK? <laughs> and here, 
as a little bit longer than here. Yeah. Okay. Then you start from this point. Uh, the loop will go uh, in this way. Okay. Okay. And, and it looks like this. Another ex example uh, we can imagine there is a cone-like manifold. Okay, and here, oh sorry, it may goes, uh, it goes this way, okay, like this, okay. Just several examples, and we say accumulate uh, along a sequence of points. If, just as this example, if we take the starting point far away from this part, then you can see uh, it will take a, a lot of geodesic loop to go away from the starting point. There will be more and more geodesic loop near the starting point. Okay. So in, in this case, I say that uh, it accumulates along a sequence of points. <clears throat> okay. So the main theorem is uh, if a manifold is non-accumulated, it means that there, is, there exists no, no sequence of points such that the geodesic loop uh, accumulates. Okay. And uh, contains no smooth geodesic loop. This is necessary for our definition of geodesic chain. Then it is strongly non-collapsed. Strongly non-collapsed means that if we have a control on the curvature, then uh, it's Injectivity radius has a low bound. Okay, so uh, I write down the exact, exactly the, the definition here. Uh, it, it's a little bit ugly, here. but it, it intuitively, intuitively, it just says that uh, your your asymptotic behavior of this manifold cannot be. Uh, cannot be uh, something like a cylinder or even a parabolaid like this. You can imagine that in this case, in this case, uh, uh, this part we are well, uh, these geodesic loops also uh, accumulate. Uh, I should say that it's just a geometric assumption um, here, non-accumulated. In fact, I, I'm not really um, know how to check this condition. I, I should say that. Okay. <clears throat> so. And the non-smooth loop condition is satisfied for some uh, rich solitons. Uh, for example, for these uh, three kinds of rich soliton, uh, there exists no smooth loop on, on them. Uh, we can see the first one. Uh, for shrinking soliton with rich curvature less than lambda g, uh, lambda is positive, so it means that uh, 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 upper bound of uh, rich curvature, but it, 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 it must be lambda. You cannot change the, the factor. <clears throat> or uh, you, can, um, you can say that for, for all uh, steady soliton with positive rich curvature, there exists no smooth loop on it. Okay. <clears throat> the proof of the uh, the proof is very easy here. If there is a smooth loop, uh, we call uh, gamma here, and L stands for the length of this loop, then we can integrate uh, the equation of Ricci soliton here, 
And because it is a smooth loop, so the, the integration of f double prime equals to zero. So we we have this the integration of Ricci curvature. And uh, if the reach is less than lambda g, then this integration is less than lambda l, where l equals to uh, uh, the length of this closed loop. OK, so the proof is easy here. So combined with uh, the, our main theorem, uh, we have the result that uh, these three types of Ricci soliton are strongly non-negative when they are non-accumulated. So as I mentioned, the motivation of this theorem is to, to, to study the tangent cone at infinity of uh, expanding soliton. So we can have the corollary here. And expanding or even shrinking is true. Uh, expanding or shrinking soliton with uh, which satisfies uh, the curvature decay condition here, and which is non accumulated, and uh, we should ask for some topological assumption here, then its tangent cone at infinity must be flat. <coughs> okay. The definition of tangent cone at infinity is the limit of this rescaled uh, manifold. And, uh, another question is uh, how, to, how to know the information on the original soliton by studying its tangent cone at infinity. Uh, a classical uh, approach is If we know that um, <coughs> the manifold M with non-negative Ricci curvature and uh, R N as its tangent cone at infinity, then we know that uh, M is flat isometric to Rn. Uh, it's a result of Minicosi, holding Minicosi. And but here we we don't want to use this condition, and we don't want to put it here. So uh, in general, it's not easy to find a, a relation between the uh, tangent cone at infinity and the original manifold. But uh, in the expanding case, there is a, a very recent result just uh, two weeks ago. They study a, a weighted uh, reduced volume of Ricci flow. Uh, we, we, we know that uh, reduced volume is very important to study shrinking soliton because uh, uh, it appears in some, some part of the, the, the equations. But for expanding soliton, uh, it, I think this one is good. The, the title of the paper is Reduced Entropy. You can find it in uh, an archive. Okay, they, they use this to prove that if uh, this rescaling manifold uh, converges 
if this one converges in C2, of course in C2 it, uh, it, it implies that in C infinity because it is just a property of uh, a theorem of Hamilton C2 or C, uh, C infinity. If we really converge, <coughs> then M is flat, or uh, here we expand in some. Uh, the proof for all type 3 solution, type 3 solution. The M is flat. Oh. Oh, they don't need to know that this limit is flat or not. Just use the convergence here. Then they can prove that uh, the, the manifold is Rn. So if uh, I, 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 I have not read the paper now, but if the, the paper is okay, then uh, combining with uh, our result here, and we know that an expanding solid tone with uh, curvature decay and non-accumulated properties must be Rn. Okay, so this is my talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>